My name is Dr. Janelle Dua. And I'm Dr. Yatande Asiadu. We are primary care physicians at Yale Internal Medicine Associates. Type 2 diabetes affects more than 34 million Americans. If it's not well controlled, it can lead to a number of multiple serious complications. We created this series of videos to help empower patients to take control of their diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic disease that's very common where your body has trouble uh, managing the sugar levels in your blood, also known as glucose. Usually this has to do with both your body's production of a hormone called insulin and also uh, how your cells respond to insulin. And usually there's some dysregulation in how that process goes, leading to higher levels of sugar in the blood beyond what we consider normal or healthy. The symptoms of diabetes are typically feeling very thirsty, urinating a lot, feeling very tired, losing weight. If you have those symptoms, you should get tested. Testing for diabetes is, is actually pretty simple these days. It's a blood test, and it can be done in various ways. One is we can measure your blood sugar when you're fasting, or we can measure a non-fasting level with something called hemoglobin A1C, which gives us an average of your blood sugar so that it lasts two to three months. And an A1C of 6.5% or more means that you have diabetes. So in the short term, a person with diabetes and really high sugars may feel very unwell, right? The blood sugar is high in the bloodstream, it's not entering those cells. The person may not have enough energy, so feeling very tired, urinating a lot, um, and that may lead them to come to the hospital, sometimes with dehydration. Having really high blood sugars can lead to something called diabetic ketoacidosis, and that's a condition where acid builds up in the bloodstream and can be very dangerous unless it's treated promptly with insulin. So those are the, the short-term complications. In the long term, over many years, diabetes, particularly untreated diabetes, can lead to other complications. This is a disease that is manageable, and it takes a lot of effort, but thinking about lifestyle changes in the realm of diet and exercise and medications ensures that you're taking a multi-pronged approach to control your diabetes and that there's specialists and subspecialists and your primary care doctors that can help you along the way. So there are a number of ways that diabetes can affect the heart and the cardiovascular system. The first major one is that diabetes is what we call the silent killer because of the fact that the high blood sugars can affect the internal arteries and veins without you actually feeling them initially until the disease progresses. And so the high sugars affect the lining of the artery so that the arteries end up a little bit more rough so that the cholesterol plaque can actually stick onto the arteries and cause early heart disease. And in turn, that can lead to earlier heart attacks in some patients. In addition, it actually can also lead to high blood pressure because those arteries are now not smooth muscles anymore. Um, and so because of that, it can actually affect the blood pressure as well and make the blood pressure rise. The same condition where the plaque can actually layer onto the heart arteries um, easier and faster in diabetics, that happens in the leg arteries as well. And so we have a lot of our diabetic patients who find that they have a lot of pain when they're walking, and that's usually because there are blockages in the arteries going down to the leg. I see a large number of diabetic patients. About 20% of patients that I see, they have diabetic retinopathy. Also, diabetes is a risk factor for glaucoma and cataracts. Diabetes affects the eye from front to back. In the front part of the eye, it can affect the lens and can impact cataract, can increase the risk of cataract and also glaucoma. In the back part of the eye, it can affect the retina. It's a condition called diabetic retinopathy. And that's the most common cause of blindness in working age people between the age of 25 to 70. And in diabetic retinopathy, the blood vessels which are in the retina get affected and it causes 
a loss of vision. It's important to have annual eye exam because diabetic retinopathy in early stages could, could be without any symptom. Podiatrists definitely see a lot of patients with diabetes. In fact, we recommend that all patients that have diabetes and any complication from diabetes see a foot specialist. Unfortunately, foot problems can often sneak up on patients with diabetes who are having other complications. There are three main problems that can affect the feet in patients with diabetes. The first problem that people can suffer from is a problem with blood flow to the feet. Anyone can develop clogged arteries, but unfortunately people with diabetes that have poor blood sugar control over a period of time can definitely be at a higher risk of developing problems with blood flow to the feet. People who develop blood flow issues can then develop other problems such as non-healing ulcers, gangrene, and it can even lead to amputation or loss of a leg. The best way to consider this is thinking of a garden hose bringing water to crops. If you thin the garden hose, the crops will suffer. But if you completely clog that garden hose, the crops will die. The same thing can happen to the skin and other tissues in the foot if you lose the blood flow to the foot. The second issue that people with diabetes can suffer from in the feet is that they can develop loss of sensation. Chronically elevated blood sugar can lead to problems with the nerves. The nerves are the body's warning system or warning sign. If you leave your foot near a heater to try to warm your foot, it can become severely burned if you don't properly feel the heat coming from the heater. If you step on a rock or a stone, you can develop a wound, which you may not feel if you don't have good sensation. The final major risk factor for the feet is a generalized risk factor of diminished ability to fight infection. Diabetes is the number one cause of kidney disease and the number one reason why folks end up on dialysis in the United States. It's very prevalent in the patients that I see and I go to great lengths to help patients manage their diabetes to help prevent further worsening of their kidney disease and hopefully prevent them from needing dialysis in the future. So diabetes is a problem where the blood can't properly metabolize sugar. And so sugar is often what is toxic to the various tissues in the body, including the kidneys. Short-term consequences in patients who have poorly controlled sugars, that can often lead to them needing to be hospitalized for acute management of their high sugars. They can often develop what we call acute kidney injury, which is damage to their kidney in a very short time period. And that usually happens because they come in very dehydrated in the setting of their high sugars. Now there's also long-term issues that come up with diabetes. And this we're talking about over the course of years to maybe a decade or more, that the kidney is slowly damaged from inflammation that occurs in the setting of the high sugars from the diabetes. That process is often slow it leads to the inability of the kidney to properly function as a filter of the blood. And many patients develop the symptom of having protein in their urine as a sign of diabetic kidney disease. One of the most important pieces of advice I had for people with diabetes is don't wait to start managing your diabetes and taking it seriously. Diabetes often presents with minimal symptoms or without severe consequences early on. But once it gets going and once it gets into the, late into the disease process, there's a lot of irreversible changes that take place that can no longer be prevented. So from day one that the diagnosis is made, it's really important to work with your physician or other provider to manage your diabetes, take the medications that you're being prescribed, and also watch your diet and, and maintain a good physical activity program to help prevent the consequences uh, that can come about from poorly controlled diabetes.